No labels is officially no more. In a statement today, CEO Nancy Jacobson announced that the group would end its efforts to launch a third party ticket after no candidates emerged. That leaves only one third party candidate left, RFK Jr. And his campaign has some Democrats, quote, freaked out and ready to mobilize. Back with us tonight, Jennifer Palmieri, former White House Communications Director for President Obama, and Tim Miller, host of the Bulwark podcast and the former Communications Director for Jeb Bush. Jennifer, the threat of a no-labels ticket is gone. They couldn't find a candidate. What's your take? Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those Democrats who's freaked out about RFK Jr., and I'm ready to mobilize, <laughs> Stephanie. It's, you know, it, I think that what ha I hope what happened uh, with uh, no-labels will repeat itself here, although I think that this is, uh, RFK Jr. is more complicated. You know, I think Democrats, and, you know, I guess anti-Trump forces are really aligned. And the fact that all of these candidates who looked at the possibility, who are serious, um, you know, who are ser serious leaders that looked at the possibility of possibly dealing, joining the no-labels ticket and decided that all it could do was help Trump and that and no one would do it, right? That's sort of an early indicator of concern in the populace writ large about about the possibility of Trump winning. And I think it reflects a larger concern that Democrats can sort of, you know, not not be complacent about, but can count on will be there to, to fight to fight Trump. And now you got to turn that to RFK Jr., who even if he gets just a small portion of the vote, and he's a little more complicated because I think his um, appeal could be that he appears to be independent. We're starting to see a lot of questions arise about his funding, it being backed by Trump supporters. Some of the, you know, there's uh, some questions today about uh, a sort of pro-pardoning Jan 6 comments that they that they made. If he's seen to be someone who is aligned with Trump, not, you know, and not who he claims to be, not as independent as he claims to be, I think that will really hurt him. But this notion of someone who's sort of independent, not of either party, is a real threat, even if it's just two, three um, percentage points. That could be a margin of victory. Tim, before we get to RFK, just what's your take on what happened to No Labels? I mean, for months, Nancy and her squad were out there fundraising, fundraising, full steam ahead. Yeah, I, mean, I felt from the start that Nancy Jacobson, Mark Penn, and the big No Labels donors were most, mostly delusional uh, about, A, the possibility that they could find a candidate, uh, about the possibility that that candidate could win, uh, about what the impact of such a candidate would be. Uh, you know, I think there were people out there who thought that, who who argued that this was a nefarious effort, that this was kind of some Trump stalking horse. And, and I do think it's worth saying, I, I, I never felt that way. I think it's pretty clear today, based on the decision, that that was not the case. And, uh, you know, with respect to the late Joe Lieberman, I, I think that what this really was, was just a lot of naivete from people in the group and, and a lot of rich people in New York who thought that there was a broader interest in like a center right uh, center candidate than there is. I think most people who are in that vein are for Joe Biden and like Joe Biden. Joe Biden occupies the center of this race. Maybe he's a little bit more left than, than various people would want them to be on, on one issue or another. But broadly speaking, he's acceptable. Donald Trump is unacceptable. And so it's hard to recruit somebody uh, in that environment. And I think that's why they, they came up empty. Jennifer, you were mentioning some of the things that, that certainly make RFK Jr. sound and be more right than he than people realize. Right. But the voters he could potentially pull, are they actually paying attention to the ins and outs of what he says? Or are they drawn to this new face, different guy, young VP candidate right. coming from Silicon Valley, and they don't actually know what they're getting into? But he could attract young voters that, that President Biden um, is banking on? I think right now there's polls that show him getting about 14 percent of the vote, or at least I've seen those in the last couple of months. And I think you're right. That's what it is, right? It's people are exhausted by the sort of, you know, current current political stalemate. This sounds like something new. They like the name of a Kennedy. Um, but and they like, you know, his his first ad that he did was very well done. And it was sort of like, if you're tired of both sides, here's something different. Here's an independent. And that could, could sound like a relief. But it's only been a couple of months where we're, people have started to look at him seriously. And there's, you know, there's a couple of 
Dem there's a couple of groups that have formed to, to, to take him on and the DNC I know is, is doing that as well. And I, and already you're starting, you know, people will be educated about who this guy is and what he's really for. And I think that, that will turn off a large swath of voters. That's one chunk of voters that he will lose. Then there's the messaging that needs to happen about you help him, you are helping elect Trump. I mean, there's one way to stop Donald Trump, and that is to elect Joe Biden president, period, end of discussion. And, you know, that that will also take away a number of uh, voters for him, I think, in the end. And then there's just a question of who hangs on because they, uh, you know, they find him appealing for whatever reason. And those people might be turned off as they learned He's who's who's funding him if he doesn't appear to be as independent as he is. I think those are sort of the three lanes that Democrats that are trying to stop him can look at. He's not who he says he is. There's a lot of crazy stuff that he is for. And if you vote for him, you're going to help uh, Trump. I feel pretty good about our ability to make those arguments. But still, you know, one, two percentage points could be the difference. It's really scary. Tim, what do you think? I'm aligned with a lot of what Jennifer said. I think that there's one maybe area I'd add to this. I think the Democrats don't want to bank on this, probably. But I think the very core of RFK support is pretty Trumpy, right? It is an anti-establishment, anti-vaccine, um, kind of not that engaged type of voter, um, or not that engaged. And I think like the Democratic process broadly maybe doesn't hasn't voted a lot in midterms or primaries. Uh, that maps to a Trump voter. So I think that if RFK would, is down at 2 3%, I think it's a big question about who he actually hurts. He might hurt Trump if he's really at that low of a number. Once you get beyond that, then we get into the categories that Jennifer was talking about. And I think that's the big concern for Joe Biden, is, is if RFK gets up to 8 9 10 11%, a lot of those voters are going to be basically part of the Democratic coalition traditionally, uh, black voters, younger voters, you know, people that aren't happy with Joe Biden, maybe about Gaza, maybe about inflation, and are looking as, at RFK as an off-ramp. Those are the people the Biden campaign really needs to communicate to and educate about the far-right views of RFK today going around with RFK's, uh, I guess, support for, or at least openness to um, uh, pardoning the January 6th rioters, for example, uh, you know, educating those voters about our about uh, the Democratic traditional Democratic base voters about RFK's radicalism, I think is going to be the key for, for Joe Biden. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.